Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. So we have a squared b cubed equals 6 to the power 6. And we're going to be looking for integer solutions. I made a separate video on Diophantine equations. You can go ahead and check that out here. So let's see how we can solve these problems. First of all, we're looking for integer solutions. Could be positive and negative. But notice that we have a squared, so it can be positive or negative. So let's see how we can break it down. First of all, I want to break down the 6 to the power 6, and I'm going to write it as 2 to the 6 times 3 to the power 6. So here's what we're going to be looking for. Since a and b are integers, and we have the powers of 2 and 3 on the right-hand side, a and b also have to contain powers of 2 and 3. We don't know how much, but 2 to the power 0 and 3 to the power 0, by the way, is also included. So this means we can write a as a product of a power of 2 and a power of 3, so like 2 to the power x times 3 to the power y. And I can also write b similarly as 2 to the power z, times 3 to the power w. For example, if x and y are both 1, then a becomes 6. All right? So let's go ahead and plug this into our original equation. So if you replace a with 2 to the power x times 3 to the power y, I have to raise it to the second power, and b write it as 2 to the z times 3 to the w, and raise it to the power 3, and that should equal... 2 to the power 6 times 3 to the power 6. Okay, so we basically did the prime factorization on the right-hand side. Now let's go ahead and expand. Uh, if you multiply x times 2, that's going to be 2 to the power 2x, 3 to the power 2y. This is going to be 2 to the power 3z and 3 to the power 3w. And then on the right-hand side, we have 2 to the power 6 times 3 to the power 6. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, we assume that a and b are uh, products of powers of 2 and 3, and then we plugged it in. Now we kind of need to organize this or, you know, simplify this a little bit. So here's how it goes. We have 2 to the power 2x and 2 to the power 3z. So we can go ahead and add these exponents because they have the same base. So it becomes 2 to the power 2x plus 3z. And then we can do the same thing for powers of 3. That gives us two, 3 to the power 2y plus 3w. And this equals 2 to the 6 times 3 to the 6. Great. Now what did we do? We basically separated the 2s and 3s on the left-hand side. And we they're already separated on the right-hand side. Since x and y are x, y, z, w, all of them are integers, right? They have to be actually not just integers, but non-negative integers because they're kind of prime factorizations, right? Uh, we can go ahead and set the powers of 2 equal to each other. This doesn't always work with real numbers, but with integers, it does. So, in other words, you can't get a power of 3 from a power of 2. So, we can safely say that 2x plus 3z is equal to 6, right? And... 2y plus 3w is equal to 6. So we got a system of equations and x, y, z, w are non-negative integers. So in other words, they have to be greater than or equal to 0 and they have to be integers. All right, let's see how we can solve these equations. Well, we have four variables, but two equations. But remember, this is like a Diophantine equation and this just became a Diophantine equation system. So go ahead and check out the video on Diophantine equations if you're not familiar. So let's see. Let's take the first equation. 2x plus 3z equals 6. Now this equation has finitely many solutions if x, y, z, w, r greater or equal to 0. But notice one thing that the, f the first and the second equation, like if I number this one and number 2, they are very similar because um, they kind of come with the same coefficients, 2 and 3. Uh, of the variables and on the right hand side we have the same number so if I can find like solution pairs for x and z then it should work with y and w make sense great okay let's see how this goes so I'm gonna start with zero because that's the smallest possible we can use 
And do we have a solution? So here's the thing. 3z is divisible by 3. 6 is divisible by 3. So 2x must also be divisible by 3, which means x must be a multiple of 3. 0 is a multiple of 3, which is cool, so 0 will work. If x is 0, I'll get 0 plus 3z is 6. That means z is equal to 2. So that gives us one ordered pair. What happens if x is equal to 1? Unfortunately, it's not going to work because remember what we said about x. x must be a multiple of 3. So x can be 3 next. And if x is 3, then z has to be 0. And that's it. We don't have any other solutions because uh, if you continue, like let's say if you replace x with 6, uh, you know, you're going to get uh, negative values for z. So you don't want that. Okay? Great. So what happens uh, with the second equation? Same thing. 2y plus 3w equals 6 gives us 0, 2. 2 is w, by the way. And 3, 0. So we kind of have two ordered pairs for each equation. You know what that means? And there's an and in between because they both have to be satisfied. So we're going to do a kind of like a combination maybe. So we're going to take 0, 2 and 0, 2, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and make a table to make it a little easier on ourselves. So I'm going to make a table with uh, five rows. One, two, three, four, five. And then I need six columns. So one three, four, five, six. Great. So what am I going to write in the columns and rows? So my columns are going to be x, y, z, w, and then I'm going to use a and b here. Probably use, I don't know, a and b. Okay. And then here we're going to have the values. So notice that the first equation gave us 0, 0,2 and the second one also gave us 0, 0,2. So I can kind of go off of these two things. Let's go ahead and write them, but be careful because uh, we don't have the same order. Uh, X and Z are together, so you have to skip. So I'm going to go with 0, 0,2 and 0, 0,2. Make sense? And then I'm going to go with 0, 0,2 and 3, 0. And then I'm going to go with 3, 0 and 0, 0,2. And finally, 3, 0, and 3, 0. Got it? That's how we make our table. And now let's go ahead and evaluate the values of a and b. Just a quick reminder, a is 2 to the power x, 3 to the power y. And b is 2 to the power z, 3 to the power w. So let's go ahead and consider that while evaluating a and b values. And that's what we're looking for. So 2 to the power 0, 3 to the power 0, that's going to give us 1. And then the other one is going to give us 36. If x is 0, y is 3, we're going to get 27, and then b is going to be 4, then this is going to be 8, this is going to be 9, this is going to be 216, that's the largest value, by the way, and that's going to be 1. Notice that we don't, notice that we don't have symmetry, because remember our equation, um, the numbers don't have the same power, so we're not going to have that symmetry. But one thing to keep in mind here is that we need to have a plus minus sign in front of the a values, because a squared is always going to be non-negative, even if A is negative. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.